Hello, I'm Mike Tyson. This is another episode of Hot Boxing. And I'm Mike Tyson. And I'm who And today we have a special guest, the multi-talented, quintessential entertainer, Cat Williams. How you doing, brother Cat? Look good, man. How you doing? Likewise, sir. Thank you. I'm feeling exactly how I look. <laughs> yeah, you looking great, man. Money Mike and Mike Tyson, man. You guys have met a few uh, different times Hell before, yeah. man. I've been from the show this shit. Yeah. But, what, what, do you remember the first, first time y'all met? Tell me about this shit. Absolutely. I'm not a person that's really gets starstruck just because I, I read a lot of autobiographies when I was young. So I, I thought I knew thousands of people because I knew their life story and mm -hmm. their journeys and their trajectories. But this guy, like, at the point of my life when I heard about Mike Tyson, really? he became like this superhero figure um, just because um, whatever time we were on as far as being in the street, he was already on that. The, the the understanding the power of the color black and mm. of not having frills and and letting us in on um, the mind work of a fighter Absolutely. Um, that hadn't really been done. We had to go to like WWE or somewhere to get the personality that oh, was wow. attached. No, I always wore black because black is ominous. Mm. So ominous. Yeah, and then so I met him. At a Laker game, Chick Hearns was one of my, oh, my man, dear Chick. friends. I love Chick Hearns. And um, I went to a Laker game. And I never, for some reason, I, I never knew Mike's height. Right? So I generally judge men by their aura. So spiritually, oh, wow. I know whether somebody in the room is holding some sort of weight universally, mm -hmm. you know. But other than that, I don't really focus on that. But I couldn't believe how much space this guy takes up in the scheme of things. So, yeah, I, I will always remember shaking his hand and meeting him for the first time because he became real um, right then. Was it like surreal? Like his energy was like, because I remember he used to like shake shit up everywhere you go, man. I'm just, um, I'm just passing through. I'm just, um, <laughs> I'm passing, yeah, through. passing through, you know what I mean? I'm overrated and God's just um, blessing me, giving me the light. That's all. There was a weird uh, encounter at the You and Shook Knight saw him at a, 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 a rehab spot. Well, what was that about? Or you just was there? Yeah. I so you and Suge Knight was hanging together, and then I think Bobby Brown said it on your podcast. He said, for some reason, Cat Williams was with Suge Knight, and they were at your rehab, and it was so I weird. I don't know about that shit, Cat. Yeah, yeah, what's up with that? That sounds like a multi-part question, and I, <laughs> I, unfortunately, only have an answer for one. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I spent time with Suge Knight. I'm, I'm, I'm often in the company of scary individuals mm. um just i love that i love that there's a safety and a comfort in being around me um if you're that type of person and if you're that type of person it's very hard for you to trust anything or anybody or any situation so a lot of times i bring comfort uh, in those type of situations um i don't know in the story who was in rehab um, I'm always in rehab back then. Uh, Bobby Brown. This I'm is a, why I'm you got the growth. I'm listen. I'm a. I'm a fool. I'm a relapse specialist. I always relapse and shit. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's the 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 best students. I've been in twenty rehabs. Yeah. All my friends OD and shit. You're right. A true, a true survivor, man. Right, but we got that then and now. Like there are there aren't any. There are no hero stories where the guy walks away unscathed in this experience. No, no one gets out of here experience. free. And um, if you can somehow put yourself in a position where you collect the scars instead of being full of scars, then you can get something for yourself out of it.
Tis the season for clean balls, from stocking stuffers to white elephant to Manscaped products or at the top of the every wish list. Manscaped is a one-shop stop for all the holiday needs. They have the perfect gift in the Platinum Package 4.0 plus perfect stocking stuffers. Manscaped offers a handful of liquid fermentation, shampoo, body washes, upstairs, downstairs deodorant, gel, and foliage, absolutely everything they could and need to keep clean. Go beyond the growing with Manscaped full body product line. Dad has a nasty nose here. Save his life with the weed whacker nose and ear hair trimmer. The Sheer 2.0 is their full kit for nails, cares with scissors, clippers, tweezers, and a file. There's a new preserved cologne that brings a light, breezy, woodsy feel and gives a fresh tree scent even after Christmas is over. Still using a loafer, introducing the body buffer. Lastly, top of the stocking with the long mower 4.0. The electric razor advanced skin safe technology is a life changer and known for reducing nicks and cuts on Santa's sack. Save 20% off the free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash hotbox. That's right, 20% off free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash hotboxing. Manscaped, for a perfect gift that will be a holiday biggest hit. The most wonderful time of the year could also be the most hectic time of the year. If you're anything like me, you put off everything and shopping to last minute. If you have an online store, you know the feeling of getting hit with a ton of orders at once. When you're buried in orders and emails from stressed customers, you wish you had ShipStation. Hey, man, that's right. ShipStation turns holiday ship storms into smooth sailing. As we all know, the holidays can be very stressful, but using ShipStation isn't, Mike. I like to avoid extra holiday stress by getting on top of our shipping process before the season gets crazy, yo. With ShipStation... We don't have to feel overwhelmed and can feel reassured. Our customers, Mike, are receiving their orders on time, man. Man, I agree, man. It's way better than using the default shipping option for online stores. Word. With the ShipStation, you are able to manage every order from one single dashboard. Automate routine shipping tasks, print shipping labels, and easily compare rates and delivery time to optimize every shipment. And with Enterprise solutions that make warehouse optimization easy, ShipStation scales when you do. So there are no limitations on your growth opportunities, Mike. ShipStation has a free trial and quick setup. If you've been on the fence about trying it, there's no better time than now. One of the best parts is ShipStation works with all your favorite places to sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. With ShipStation, you save time, money, and stress during the holiday rush. When you sign up to use your promo code, you'll even get two months to try it for free. This holiday season, give yourself the gift of stress-free holiday shipping. Use promo code HOTBOXING today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial, man. That's a long time, Mike. Again, that's ShipStation.com. Promo code hot boxing. Sign up for Ship Station now. Do you yeah, feel that you, you, you and Mike have like the same kind of like background? Your your circle is small. Your club is like hard to get in. You you speak of trust. Right? It was big at one time. No, I'm talking about like you see you see you fuck with Shig Knight. That's like. Even other, there's other cats too that he's not even saying, but it's a, I learned, it's a small I, club. I learned a lot from him, and yes, um, I. That's the thing about me is I. The only real thing I get out of a daily experience is the fact that I'm guaranteed that I am going to find out something today mm. that I didn't know yesterday, and I know how much stronger that makes me the more times that happens. So. Um, I was trying to be the Mike Tyson of comedy, no matter what that meant, because I understood that we watched somebody come out of nowhere, and then we watched the fact that there was this whole space of time before the bandwagon. 
Mm. When it wow. was when when the uh, great portion of the people coming to the fight are coming to see this guy get hurt, and as the betting person, you're going. I don't think you guys understand what this dude has already fought. Like unless a demon comes out. Oh shit! And at some point, it just becomes the law of average. Other than that, it, 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 it's a joy to watch. I tried to be that comedically. And well, what people don't know about comics and champion that they have to understand loss. You know, there's no way you're going to be the best ever if you don't understand loss. If not in your profession, then in life. You have to understand loss and overcome loss. Mm. Because life is about loss. As you get older, you lose your friends, you lose your hair, you lose your teeth, and you lose your interest in live, to live. And that's what life is truly about. At the end, we all lost. Is is this similar, like boxing and, and comedy in the truth? Absolutely. As far as like getting paid in the beginning, like, no, were, check were, were you out. part of that cheap pay in the beginning, or, or you know, coming from Cincinnati, like what, what was the cheapest pay you got, and what was the cheapest pay you got to box? Yeah, I'm hoping that it doesn't correlate at all. Mm. But comedically, um, I spit chitlin. That mean, that mean. Um, you, getting enough money out of the chitlin circuit to be wealthy. That, that's a lot of chitlins. Mm. Um, so I, I worked for zero money more times than I worked for $25,000 in mm. the beginning. So it's okay that it gets to this point. Working for free was part of it. I'm saying um, that's kind of like the training process of boxing is... What, you, what you're willing to not have and what you're willing to deal with. And comedy itself is about taking the same tragedy and trauma that everybody else is dealing with it and somehow wringing something of value out mm. of it. So taking something that's terrible and tragic and traumatic and to be able to present that and get somebody to laugh in that context mm -hmm. is... Um, universally important i mean sacrificing years of just not seeing money that's 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 crazy but i didn't get, get paid it. my three fights for three um, um, my first three fights as a pro i didn't get paid but i wanted the people to see me once they saw me i knew yeah. they would pay me money yeah exposure i mean yeah. you were so young did, did you just, know how much you were getting paid like i didn't care i didn't, didn't care give a fuck. <clears throat> i wanted to reach my goal i wanted to be the greatest that ever been born Wow. Right. I mean, coming at me in New York, I, I know so many comedians, they get paid like $30 and then, you know, they get like some kind of bar money and stuff like that. Hey, listen, in order to be the greatest, you have to be at the lowest. Yeah. I never worshiped the bag. So mm. that differentiated me from all of my peers. Like, like, I know what money's good for, and I know that the more of it you have, the more useful you can be. But. It, uh, God has a higher standing on my list of things than the bag does. And um, because of that, it's no shit on you that you are working this much and not getting paid. Because what I'm really doing is working so that when I do get paid, mm -hmm. I can change the craft to where these comics felt like they could have one act and do that for 20 years. I'm going to get in there and I'm going to switch it to the point where everybody got to come with new material every time because that's the way it go. Mm. And things will change from the inside because I'm going to say from the start, I'm an outsider coming in the industry and you don't need to like me. But um, there's so many blessings in just having a plan and working the plan. How did you uh, kickstart your career though? Where where was it that you know started Cat Williams pop off? Was it like Cincinnati? Was it... New York was it L.A. I don't know. Oh no, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> giving him some nuts. That's a pleasure, oh, man. That's nuts, man. <laughs> yeah. That's all friend. That's your real friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I appreciate oh, so it. That, you don't remember? Um, the, the, so yeah. yeah, not not Cincinnati. I was born in Cincinnati. I was okay. raised in Dayton, but um, none of that's that is. That's all Max, though. Yeah, that's no right, <laughs> right. But I didn't know. I thought it was regular, but. Um, yeah, comedically, I was born in um, 
a little suburb of Tampa, Florida, and then mm. I was nurtured in Oklahoma City. And then I just kept pecking comedy hotspots to go work out at for a couple of years. So I spent a few years in Sacramento, and then I spent a few years in Oakland, and then I felt like I was comedically at the point I needed to be, and then I came to Los Angeles. Wow, man, that's crazy. This guy's hustling. That must have been overwhelming when you got here, huh? Um, All these different personalities in this one room. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're in that comedian circle, everybody's in the room together. Mm-hmm. Till you get to become, till you blow up and have your own little room. Right. I was older than my counterparts when I started, and there were already 300 African American comedians that were already famous in America, and I what? made a list of them. And I was just trying to figure out how am I going to position myself where I can be a part of this conversation, and how far mm. can I? get this conversation in. So um, competition and competitiveness are, you know, a part of the craft that I excel at. I mean, the whole world look, looks at you like you're a unicorn, but is there? did you look up to, like, a comedian? Like, how all these other comedians, those big up, like, Richard Pryor, they, they big up, like, I feel like God just found you or something. Like, it's just so unique. Is this somebody you used to look up to to, to, to be funny? That's you the, were always funny. Uh, you're a street name. You don't, you don't expect him to talk like that, right? <laughs> I, 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 had a, I had a different, I had a different take on comedy. Like I yeah. didn't, I didn't understand that you could be funny for a living. I didn't get that part of the correlation. Mm. It's just I understood that when people made you laugh, that was work, and they were putting in work. So I had for fifty white comic guys, there was 50 black comic guys, and I thought they were just part of the comedy community. And um, yeah, there's no real pressure. Did you know Robin Harris? You didn't meet Robin Harris, have you? Right before my, he he had passed right as I was moving to Los Angeles. You would have loved this man. This man was Everybody said that. Yeah. I've gotten to be around so many Great individuals, mm. but okay. uh, but um, you have been. It's just, but just like me, everybody that's great is not good. You know, I met a lot of great people, but most of the great people I met were some good people. In my experience in life, you seem to be an expert in identifying those individuals over the years. Um, do you believe in all that planting, all that what industry planning stuff at Hollywood? And- what are you talking about? Uh, the way they choose like certain comedians to be like, because Cat is like a legend in itself, but he never went the route of like what politics or the narrative. No, no, no. name another comedian that did. Uh, don't be no chicken, you know. What? <laughs> yeah, they were just here. <laughs> he said they were just here. <laughs> uh, you're so politically correct. Uh, what a blessing. I mean, you know, That's his own skill. I mean, you know, he, he has a list of people that over the years, there's always like conspiracy theories and stuff like that. He's into conspiracy. that. But, um, Tell me you about know. your conspiracy, brother. What you believe in? He said you believe in that way. Cat has the science. What's the I, science of everything right now? What, what I, What's your science of everything, Cat? I'm never pretending to know the answers to things that Mm -hmm. I'm going into. I'm going into it trying to find out the answers. So that frees me up, um, that my ego's not involved in what the answer turns out to be. But we we collect information. And um, there aren't that many conspiracy theories anymore because we found out that all conspiracy theories, there's a nugget of truth in there. It came from somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's where it became a theory. And then it progressed to the point where it became a conspiracy theory Mm. because there was something there. So, you know, um, we don't have to wonder, are there other beings in the universe other than us? Reverse engineering can only be a thing because of a thing. We, We can see that in all other industries, if it's not military or government based, there are no leaps in technology anywhere to be seen. Um, It's only in these certain sectors that 
we're able to jump ahead because of you know why well, like this? why do you contract. think why do you think we exist no, you I, know, I believe it's a video game uh, boom I said that today I said all this wow. I was with my wife no Holy. I said my wife today I said wow this is an illusion I love you and I'm I'm gonna be so upset when it's over right yeah I thought that wow I said that today yeah we we, we believe that this is um Matrix, this Matrix bullshit, my wife believe. Why are you saying the same shit this nigga said? And well done. It, it, it's Scared the reason the that everything somehow. fits together. Like, it would be enough if there was Do you just, believe in other lives? You lived other lives? I, I know that the whatever is in our body, whatever that weighs, I know that when it leaves here, it still weighs that in the universe. So it's somewhere. It came to you from somebody. Yes. Wow, right? It came to yeah. you from somebody. When it leaves you, it's going to go somewhere else. Yeah. It, it's the reason that when you're young, there's a lot of things that you learn that nobody taught you at all. You just... This whole world is just one big school. Right. One big school. And when we right. die, we're not going to know as much as we die, but even as much as we left. You know, we don't know anything. Yeah. only thing we know is what they told us in those books. Right. You know what I mean? Or whatever whatever right. it is. Mm. That's you how you shit. know that there's truth in the in the history though. Because um we're now in a place now in um, in history where we we're able to to know more about the universe than ever. Like we've been to places now. Know, you know what I mean? We can't. We've been to all these planets and we've we've had these experiences unlike anybody else in history. But the problem is that whatever they said about the planets six thousand years ago is bullshit. No, it was all true. Mm. And we are just now finding out. So the question is, how the fuck did they know? Oh, shit. Why did they say Mars was the red planet before they got there and explained to us that that's what it was like and what the environment was? How did they know about the rings on that planet? And why were they correct about it? And if they're that correct, what were... I'm and saying, like I said, who are we? How do, <laughs> how, how, who's our ancestor? Huh? Um, since the, when it first started, how did my ancestor look? My millions ancestor. Wow, I can't even say a million ain't nothing. A million years ain't shit compared to time. Trillion, right. who's my trillion? Ooh, life is a bitch, huh? Right. There's no time. We made time, but it's really eternity. That's what we, you were saying when you said the 365 days. So before somebody called it that, then how old were you? Like, how yeah. were you measuring Julius Caesar, your Before Julius Caesar said, hey, motherfucker, this is going to be one year because I can't take this shit. So we, it's no such thing as time. It's eternity, and we turned it into time. Yeah. I thought when I was real young, I thought if you was a great, great man, you generally died around 25 or 26. Cool. So I had planned my life according to that. And I got into this thing about six or seven years old where I was like, yeah, every seven years, that's almost like a new you. And so I've kept that model going my entire life. So, you know, I've, you know? I've lived seven whole existences that wow. were separate from the one before it, taking what it takes from it, but yeah. That's amazing right there, you know. You could just fuck my whole head up right there with all that shit, man. You know, um <laughs> when you Yo. do that young, it's the way it is. <laughs> it's easier. Is that the way is that the reason you're who you are? Because you know, when, when did you figure all that out? In your younger years? Or did you have to like do you, why do you think you're that way? Do you ever think your member or your family conduct themselves the way? Who mm -hmm. who are you? Who do you take after? How do you exist? Who, who do you learn from? How was your mother and father? What was your, your relationship? Um they were very religious and very in love with one another. So um I only saw anything other than that but I, I was I was really a literal person so when I read in the Bible that Jesus left home at 13 like I'm thinking wow I'm really his Holy dude shit. down here so that's what I'll be doing so I had all like that's weird I, that's really I, interesting. I understood that I thought differently than other people but I I worked it to what its strengths were and um, just consumed a lot of information. Like, I, I I was blown away by reading. Like, I was mm -hmm. just blown away that, 
like in this amount of time, I could go off and go in a room. And when I come out, I know, like that's the only way I made it through school is by the time we started school, I had already read the whole book. Like I didn't go chapter to chapter. I'm trying to know this whole thing that we're. Do you think you're an extremist? I, I hope so. I hope so, just because I know that there's different stages of everything. So sometimes things curdle, sometimes they rise to the top. I know that um, any extreme is better than lukewarm, um, in my experience, and that stagnation is what can't happen. Oh, wow. Wins we can prosper in, losses we can learn from, but <clears throat> stagnation takes no losses. Do you get frustrated? Uh, like you can't speak your mind all the time with the media. Is it, people look, kind of look at you like you, you know? Speak your mind. Why you want them to know what you're thinking? No, I mean you know like he sometimes tells his own truth and other like. What what is that? You know, like famous comedians, they always like come at you. I feel like you're up against the machine. Every time I see like videos on you or or or, or you know news press on you, it's like ten comedians are after you. They always get they have an opinion of something you said. You know, you said. So if you say right. like for example, you said uh, um, Eddie Murphy's not like relevant or whatever since the '80s. So, but that's like you're talking about stand up. You know well, that was that was strategically yeah. said. That was just to get put a crawl in Eddie so he would come out and do stand-up, you know? See, but, like, but the thing, when you say that to the narrative... We call plays. Yeah, but, so, so to answer your question, yeah. no, I don't feel some sort of way about it because that's where I'm aligned. I'm aligned against the machine. Wow. See that? So I, I understand that, you know... Gonna be haters. In, in media, somebody's getting paid. That's the crux of, me, of media, is that something here equals something there. Wow. So you're the numbers guy and you you got paid heavily because you you've proven your numbers with your stand-ups and your your specials and stuff like that. Did you have to like fight to get those numbers like to prove to get paid like or, or I mean, do you get mad when you see other people get paid without dealing the way you did it? Well, you know this nigga from cat. No. It's like really? I don't, I don't, <laughs> no, I don't. No. <laughs> I don't. I don't get mad about how anybody's oh, trajectory okay. goes. Like I don't. Just because I don't weigh it like that. Like I want you to say that so they they can stop seeing the videos. Hey, the cat, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> right. Me neither. On or off toad. Okay. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> The yeah, story. Man, the man, story. Man, let you, man. Mike is no, crazy, no, let me man. Mike turn you no, no. Fucking he know what he's trying to hear. <laughs> <laughs> no, he can't turn me into one. He's the opposite of he that. Has to he be turns one. you mild. Can't turn him into him. Yeah, I'm already beastie. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying I don't, I don't, I don't feel like there's things I can't say. I, I, I know that in this culture, you have to weigh what you say. Mm a little bit more. But that's how I got successful in the first place is I'm considering Oh, sorry. How it could be taken what I'm gonna say. <laughs> too high, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is really hot boxing <laughs> with Mike Tyson. It's kicking in. 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 Where's my blunt? Can I get a, Oh, my blunt's somewhere right here, right? I dropped it in the front of the camera. Sorry. Yeah, I'm about to tell you, motherfucker. Get on his level. Oh, damn. <laughs> I'm so happy Cat understands the whole the whole science over here. <laughs> I appreciate the science. No, Kat. The sweet science. Yes, sir. The popcorn's right here, but I thought it was right here. <laughs> it was both of those things. Because there is no time. It's been both of them oh, places. Yeah. I just took a, a handful of mm, that went <laughs> like a fucking clutch. Just getting closer. Oh God! Is, is there a list of comedians you fuck with? You want to put that out there, like uh, a list, like you really fuck with, like are you close with or friends with? Who the fucking one close with some comedian? You got a question? I mean, question. you know, like they're, they're, all the comedians got clicks. I don't know. Like you, you seem to be a loner. Like when I look at your shit, I'm quietly the king. So mm. um, 
wow. the difficulty of that is you're trying not to mm. tax those that are within the realm, uh, if possible. So I, I stand for comedians that are original and that write and that oh, have a shoot. point of view and um, have a standard of what they deliver. So male and female, this is my 18th 100 city tour. So mm, in each wow. of those tours, I've taken another collection of comedians that fit that bill. So um, this current tour is You're very just eloquent like and sophisticated, you know, as you express yourself. I want to crush Thank everybody you. to my feet. <laughs> I want the same thing. I appreciate that. You yeah. can't. You can't like, be nobody. Like he, reminds you, he reminds you of you, huh? Huh? You have to want to crush the world. You have to want to dominate this world. If this is an illusion and we don't have much time to do, we can be whatever we want, right? Yeah. Right. And if you ask anybody that's on their way out transitioning. Um, that's really the only gripe from anybody is, man, when I had the opportunity to do it this way, I took the safe way too many times, you know? Mm -hmm. And so there's something to be said about um, any points in your life where you tried something, where you gave something a go. Um, and the more you do it, the better it is. Uh, cancel culture, you know, Mike talks about that a lot. It doesn't really affect him. Are you off the list? Of? Cancel, like, you know, you got to watch what you say, like, you know, on stand-up or... <clears throat> I think everybody has to watch what they say in this climate, but wow. um, um, that's not really what's at stake. See, in our industry, who pays you is who tells you what narrative you're mm. allowed to wow. use and I'm not paid so I own my narrative so oh, um, that is what makes my opinion valuable at all is because wow. it's not bought by Republican or Democrat it's not bought by um, a religious sect it's not bought by my oh, um, my connections with this person and that person mm. It's truly um, based upon as close to an unfiltered opinion as possible. Mm. And, um, yeah, that's the only part of it that's worse than anything. So I, I'm sure I can be canceled, but... Um, so on this show, right? I'm the not going to... I can cancel you, motherfucker. What's the name of that again that I'm, I'm associated with? Oh, relevant. <laughs> so when they cancel, they say, we're going to cancel you, Mike. I said, well, really? I'm going to cancel you, motherfucker. <laughs> I was praying it right, wasn't Manscaped. Right? <laughs> <laughs> huh? I'll cancel you, motherfucker. Because, <laughs> you know, sometimes I don't like to say bitch, nigga, hoe, and all that shit. Mm, yeah. But, you know, sometimes I don't say that. How the fuck am I have a conversation? Mm. You know, but I just try to keep it in perspective. I don't use those words anymore because I realized I realized that um, we're kings and shit. You know, my daughter read that to me in the Bible, but we can die though. She said we're gods that can die. That's what my daughter told me. Yeah. So yeah, I have to look at myself as a god that can die. Yeah. And not a nigga no more. That's killing me because I always like the word nigga, but. It's, it's gone now. Well, it's really not gone, but, you know, I'm working on <laughs> it being gone, I guess. I'm trying to get it together. Can't Nigga to God is... That's the title of something. <laughs> yeah. Well, I always tell my kids, my kids are a little... I don't know my kids. Are they, um, how can I call... What do I say my kids are? They just don't get it. They don't know the power of the word nigga yet. You know, they're privileged. That's the word. They're privileged oh, okay. kids. Right. But always, you say always, that like... All the time I sit in the house all the time, nigga, he's, he's a golf player, right? So why he's hitting the golf player? I mean, you stupid fucking nigga! And I said, you got to be prepared because people got to say that. <laughs> right? Now, come on, right. cat. You're absolutely on, stop correct. Stop that bullshit, cat. Because on Meghan Markle's show, Meghan Markle said her and her mom was in the car <laughs> and the lady... 
got out. <laughs> her mom honked the horn, and the lady got out and said to her mom, nigga, and I'm at home going, no, Megan, she was talking to you, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good parenting. That's wow. good parenting. Yeah, yeah, always, they got I always put the word, I say it all day, nigga, because they don't know the power of that word one day. Right. <laughs> they laugh me. They think I'm a fucking primitive nigga in my house. <laughs> <laughs> they read books, Tolstoy, and all that shit. I don't know. I read all that shit in prison. Wow. Who they think I am? You know, all that shit. She ran and mm. all that bullshit. I read that stuff in prison. Who are you, little girl, 13 years old with your little computer? Your computer can't match me. Are you crazy? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Michael, why, why do you... I have to check them because they think they know something from these books and all this shit. I already read those books in prison, okay? Yeah, but you gave them this greater experience. They got no competition. You gotta push them. Yes, without question. Yeah, well, that's what makes you the sensei in the in the conversation. But they getting something from you. That's why I don't down Nick Cannon. Like I understand <laughs> what he's doing. Like, hey, hey, you know anybody kid in the world would listen to me sometimes, but my own. You know, they look at dad from a different perspective. Everybody in the world loved dad, but hey, I saw dad and my mother arguing before, and dad was out of place. They see that, right. other people don't see that. Oh, and so well. they, they're very familiar with your goods and your bad points in life. Which is healthy, though. And no doubt about it. They have to, they're going to experience that as well. Right. right. But they don't dig it, you know. It's not that they just don't dig it. I, I think youth doesn't allow you to get the concept of some things. I don't Youth is wasted on the young. Indeed. Unless you're um Peter Pan without being pedophilic like myself and just <laughs> you know, this is the height I was in fifth grade, baby, and I have maintained the waistline and everything as far as I can. Like I like I still watch yeah. More cartoons than I am proud to say on a daily basis, just because. <laughs> you a Scooby Doo type guy? No. Oh. <laughs> no. Damn man. No, because <laughs> I. That's that's who you were. Huh? I love. Doo. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. Why you let Mike shame you about your present childhood? Oh, fuck. Are you being serious? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Damn, man. What did I do? I'm too high. I can't even smoke because I'm too high. What did I do this I bring this out. Blame me. Y'all brought up nigga earlier. Was there a lot of racism back then? Like, you know, obviously there was, but racism with you, like your experience. When the fuck is back then? I'm high right now. I'm, I'm high right now, but. In the 40s. Back in the, the olden days. days. I'm talking about. Yes, the, the dinosaur were out of <laughs> pocket. Cat. So you, we had to Cat. kill them all. Cat, this nigga went to college. <laughs> yes, oh, right, a fine way. institution. Oh, what what happened with What's that? the name of your college? How, how did you deal with that? Like, or if you, have you had experience who, with that? Who, who, what's the name of your college? Uh, I went to see the repost. What was that like? Like white kids and getting pregnant and shit like that. And doing okay. <laughs> Just that shit. That's cat. the most racist thing I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look how you talk, cat. He the, hey, guys, what's that thing? I'm cool, cat. White people getting pregnant. That's the baddest thing in the world, though. You know that, right, cat? You want to go to the trailer park? <laughs> <laughs> Look at the teeth, Ken. You never had no bad experience like, you know, with racism. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You did, all, all through, all through my existence. All through it. Hmm. Holy shit. Yeah, I did a lot of traveling. So, if you do a lot of traveling, you see more. Oh my God. Is it is it because they your fame or is it initially your color or? Um, racism takes many forms. Okay. Um, it's judicial a, system. It's a right. It's an offshoot of of jealousy. And so that's something that's prevalent around the world. Um, and in America, it just happens to be uh, very out there. But even in Georgia to this day, I'm saying a guy like Herschel Walker barely lost an election. Wow. So that goes to show you what type of black people they like there. What they like, 
that's a represent like we would never do that to white people. We would ne- never like let a, a obviously slow and concussed person like I can't believe literally you be <laughs> your votes. <laughs> you wouldn't trust this what? guy with a sharp lawnmower. And you're saying, hey, maybe we should put him in a place where he makes decisions hey, listen. for all of us. Hey, listen, it's funny, but he almost won. That's the point. And he's going to win if he keeps. The winner yeah. barely beat this guy. And, and listen, <laughs> yes. And listen, and from that, from being a football player and know what it's like to lose and coming back stronger, mm. he might come, he might win next time. <laughs> I know. Listen, I know. Up, I know. Man. Sometimes you wanted to be somewhere, but you can't beat that spirit, you right? Know? And that's what it. they were voting for. Yeah, nigga. Listen, it's just the way the world is. Herschel said, "This erection is for the people." What erection? And, and at home, I what was like, said? "My erection is." He well. said, "Erection." Did I'm he a say little erection more specific, but injection. He said, "Erection or injection." The- no, he said erection. <laughs> <laughs> or election or something, right? Erection. Erection. <laughs> the truth sometimes just comes out. Oh, my God, man. <laughs> okay, listen. This is bullshit. Tay, listen. Um, check this out, Dick. <laughs> you know, Kat? During my drug days and shit, a minute I rehab, I had a fucked up relationship with my kids. Mm. And it's been probably... Um, Fourteen years we we became we've been friends. You know, even though it's some up and down sometimes my oldest son and my oldest daughter, but we can reach out, we can talk to each other, we still love each other. And um they all they all graduated from sophisticated colleges and stuff. And um I always said to myself, wow, what would that be like? I never went to school or anything. I've just made to do this. And mm-hmm. I'm, just very, I'm just very grateful. I can send all these kids to NYU and all these Georgetown. I can send them to college. And I never finished um, 10th grade. You did your college in prison. Absolutely. I took the punches so they wouldn't have to. Yeah. I, you know, I look at my son. He's 11 years old. I said, damn, when I was 11, I was locked up. He couldn't handle what, you know, what I survived would have killed him. No, Mike, any 11 year old. Yeah. <coughs> it, yeah, no 11 year old is supposed to be where, yeah, that's how you're in this well, position. Peep game, peep game. When I went there, yeah, and then when I got in um, the chow hall, I seen all my friends there. Yo, Mike, yo, Mike. So I always went there, I got locked up all the time. Wow. I, I didn't worry about nobody beating me up or doing anything because all my boys were there. I thought they moved or something. I didn't know they were in there. So um, that just became, I got institutionalized very young. You know, so I never had to worry about nobody bought me. Everybody, my next, my people living in my building were locked up with me. It was just, I was that guy. You know what I mean? Everybody always protected me. I was just lucky. All my friends died, AIDS. Suicide, murder, you know, and most of my friends that came out, they got 40 years, 30 years, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's crazy, and they're only 40. I mean, they're only 55. And I said, how do people come back from that without a support system? Mm. You know, it's not enough organizations that have support systems. And they call these guys, um, you know, they're, they're repeat offenders, but they have no support system. Of course, they're going to repeat their crime. Yeah, humans adapt to the environment and whatever that environment entails, and that's what it entails. It's not until you're faced with others that you figure out how other people are living. But that's what makes the greatest individual is, are the people who've had to adapt to oh, things vicious. that are beyond comprehension. You go to the children's hospitals, like, it's almost too much, you Mm. know what I mean? Like, because you know there's all these diseases in the world and all these crippling things, but the fact that there's just all of these kids in the world that are going through these grown things. Yo, Mike, you know, he's he's, he's, he's such a, 
angelic human being, man. How many kids have you adopted so far? Oh, so they're all they're, all they're all grown. So yeah, now, it's right? not that uh, I'm a grandfather. Wow. Um, yeah. I'm so waiting I got, for that moment. Oh, it's magical. I'm for that it is magical. I, I got four granddaughters, so uh yeah, it um having raised sons and daughters, um you you love different things about the relationships going either way, but the grandkids is just such an overwhelming blessing that, um, yeah. That's mm. why I was saying I, I understand Nick Cannon's whole Tell me thing. about Nick. What's yeah. Nick's philosophy? Well, I'm saying he's getting a lot of flack from people, you know, just because he has 10 or 11 yeah. children. But I'm saying we all know rich guys that die with 10 or 11 cars. And um, listen, after, my after wife did, clip 10, me, 11 cars, I would have tons of kids. I like kids. I would have tons of kids. Yeah, absolutely. And he he already saw death. And when you see oh, yeah, when death, you, see that, it's old. You, you you only concerned about your legacy after after a death experience. You know, you you really just understand that I've already reached these milestones here. What about fifty years from now? Where is my name coming from? And you know, tell me about your name. Thing. What about it? Tell me about your. When you think of Cat Williams, what do you think about? Um. Well, you have to be a little more no, specific. You I'm talking about I you don't analyzing like him. yourself. You analyzing yourself. Mm. Yeah, I'm not his biggest fan. Um. So that's what keeps the whole mechanism going. Is I like a lot of people, but um. He is a, as honest a voice as he can present in the craft that he's in. And um, as a person, um, he's one of God's friends down here, which is about the highest compliment you could get. But other than that, I don't know. I, I value... I value everybody's opinion of me, even if it's um, the people that don't like me. And to be honest, especially them. Like, I really value what they have to say, just because um, I know the consequences of crossing me mm. and, and <clears throat> the things that could possibly happen. So I, I don't, I'm not eager for anybody to catch it. That's a little responsibility. That's my new thing. You know, Mike, you know he used to freestyle and go crazy back in the days on mixtapes. Tell me about that. Can you used to rap too? Can you rap for yeah, uh, I, can you rap he, for us, brother? Posting my mixtape <laughs> back in the days. What do you do in the mixtape? What said. do you say in the mix mixtape? Um, well again, this was back in the olden days. So back then eighty two? Well, back then freestyles had to really be not written. Hmm. And the way that you showed that you were freestyling was by so utilizing the things that were in like this circumference yeah. of all of us. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it would include that guy's shirt and that guy's shirt and her hat and his shoes. You know who can do that you know? real well? LL Cool J does that real well. He's the whole room and comment on it. You don't even He's know. that era. <clears throat> you don't even know he noticed you. What? I mean, you had a short, you know, I think you were with Dipset, a little, little signing. Did you really sign with them or was that like, a, you know, a camera on and on? Because you used to have like the Dipset shirts. Hey, hey, easy with that little, little, little. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I have no track record of anything like that. Oh, wow. So I want to hear what, you spit. <laughs> I want to see you punch him. <laughs> <laughs> if I do that, you'll be I'm scared of you right now. Man. <laughs> if I'm working, I want everybody to work. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I, I I'm the soldier boy of comedy. Okay. Oh, I was doing all of that just because I was really doing all of that. So, Did anybody um, ever come on stage try to get you because you're ranking them so bad? Um, in the era of comedy that I was in, if somebody didn't like what it was that you said, they dealt with you 
either backstage or in the parking oh, wow. lot after the comedy show. And I always had the hood clubs in the cities that I was in. So if we were in Oakland and I was at Jeffrey's Inner Circle and I was in Hunter's Point and I'm, I'm in East Oakland. Oh so I'm saying when I come to That's LA. There's some fun places. They are. They're <laughs> full of life. And that. And getting those experiences is how I'm able to mm. sell experiences because I've seen, you know, a lot of living, if that makes any sense. Well, a lot of living in a short life. Right. And, and glad about the age. Like, that's the part I'm loving the most. Just the fact that we all have made it to this point, mm. you know, given how things were. And now to see how, what type of world you're having to grow up in if you're growing up now. Oh like, my God. Like, we, none of us can even imagine what our trajectories would have been like if we were afforded the same opportunity as mm. the person that's seven right now. Like, but that's the beauty of the true evolution, you know? Doing any movies lately? Yeah, I got two upcoming as well. I, I, I enjoy... I haven't. I think I've done like sixty movies now. I I, mm. I I haven't played Cat Williams yet, so that's what I think what you I like the most. Biography? Well, I tell my audience, you know, how wrong that was, um, of how robbed you were. Um, but yes, yeah, we already cemented the deal. Just so it's so high, it's too high over here. That's a blessing to hear you say. That was really my goal. I was like, I don't feel like anybody's hot boxing, Mike. <laughs> like, an interview is an interview, but it's not hot boxing unless Mike says I'm hot. We, don't, we, don't, we never read nothing up here, huh? <laughs> Got any regrets, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That's, that's a little threatening. Right, I'm sorry. Eh? They're, they're going to edit that right in. <laughs> Uh, let's keep it real, right? Yeah, I keep I keep lots wow, of see. Wow, look, look good at that. Was that that was at a um, movie premiere. Yeah, movie we were premiere. both in the movie that's in the poster behind you. A scary um, movie, one of those movies. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I'm in Rush Hour Four, fighting with Jackie Chan, nigga. See? <laughs> That's what I like about you. Like <laughs> in Hollywood, I just measure you by when I hear your name attached to something. How does that make me feel? So like mm. even even when you did the work on Adult Swim, like <laughs> <laughs> it was so brilliant. Like yeah, so I'm I'm a I'm a fan of <laughs> of of that whole side of things. I mean, Mike in a cartoon. You made my day with that shit. Yeah, for real, nigga. <laughs> Have you seen? The, you know, the, I, I interviewed him about it. <laughs> it oh crazy. my god! <laughs> just, I'm saying, <laughs> in the animation world, just to have a project that like really doesn't borrow from any set mm -hmm. of plays, like it really runs a whole wildcat. I was telling my wife we should tell my story in, in cartoon. Mm. Wow. See how you drop gems? I wonder right here who's going to be the first person to do what he just said. <laughs> that was brilliant. You know that? Yeah. You know, me and my wife, my wife is a genius. She just knows this shit. She just knows it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you oh, excuse me. Yeah, my wife is great. Yeah, I'm a awesome. yo, classic right there. Yeah. Is it? Is there yeah. going to be like another more like cartoon type shit coming up too? Or I mean, you, your voice is like super popular. At the fucking. Yeah. Um, I have a pretty sizable animation mm -hmm. resume going all the way to Grand Theft Auto. Yep. But um, what you, um, you saying? I'm a fan Grand of Grand Theft. What you say? What you say? Oh, so um, I got to have a 
comedy club in the city. And, you know, I'm available on your radio when you're enjoying that experience. And they can come to see the, they can come to the comedy club and I perform. And, uh, no. Yeah, this was. I want to know what you said. The, what, what was the cartoon again? Oh, no, no. This is, is a video game. This oh, is a video game. Yeah, this is uh, Grand Theft Auto. The cartoon you yeah, asked Grand, what about did, what did you was say? Boondocks. But what did you say in Grand Theft Auto? That's what I wanted to say. You used your voice, right? Yeah, I was there for days. What did you say? Beep, beep. 48 what? hours worth of shit. Really? Like, I did a whole comedy set. And then um, I did different things for the radio station. I appreciate the animation project. I did projects. I did uh, cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. I, I like. Um, but in in the Boondocks, though, it's actually my license going in to that. You know, the character looks like me. Wow. You know, so pimping, pimping. That's a whole different Mike Tyson type level. It's all good. I respect that. When are you and Mike gonna do something together, like a cartoon? That'd be the, the wildest shit ever. Shit, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Right. <laughs> Some really brilliant ideas have gone on in this conversation. I, I, I used to be at the same agency he was at. Oh, really? And so I would be privy to these moves he was making. Oh, and okay. that, as a business person, I'm like, man, this guy is not afraid to take chances and he nails it every time like the one man show to the well, that so, one man hey, show listen, has that. nothing to do with me I'm not smart enough to navigate that it's all you know it's the universe that's part of the brilliance the more, the only people that know anything know how much they don't know other than that there's no flex so, so check it out where you live at now uh, I'm still in the United States. I'm, I'm, I'm. Have you ever left the country? Bi coastal. Have you ever left the country? Oh yeah, I, I had um, done missionary work in Haiti. Oh, my for son does that. Two shit years too. before I was oh. fifteen. Yeah. My son does that shit. He, oh, my son. Oh, for his name yeah. Miguel Tyson. He goes to different country, build Man. dams and, oh, and bridges. I love Haiti. That's, I was they, <clears throat> they were having children. Children dying from diarrhea was mm. the number one killer mm. in the region that I was in. Wow. And so I would fill my pockets with salt and I would go to the villages and in Creole explain to the mothers that if you just put this in the baby's water, oh, wow. then because, you know, they would just get so dehydrated and then mm -hmm. they couldn't drink and then the water's not clean. Can't you know, know what he doesn't understand? What's that? Yeah, um, a lady might be fifty years old, never had a cat spit. Never had, oh. never been never had an injection. Never never been tested, never been observed, not never seen a doctor. Yeah, like Can you imagine that? A life of never, no appointments, 50 years old, no never checkups. Seen a doctor. Right. And living with whatever that means. So something that <clears throat> In this society, you would just oh, get no, treated immediately. Oh, pig, all the food is on me. They live through that. Are you being attacked by food again? Yeah, you don't even think I'll smoke me in this show. I'm just I apologize for that. I really cut down. I don't know if anybody <laughs> at home knows. But I, I, can't, I, can't, I laid off I as it started affecting you. I'm always mad. I can't find my fucking mouth. Where do, uh, well, one of the questions, where do you get your happiness from? He's a fucking comedian. Why he's a fucking comedian? Of course he's going to be happy. Mm. Yeah, I, I... Is that always happen, the case? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I'm I'm only... I'm always looking for that. So I'm finding my happiness um, in wherever this is. So that's why I enjoy golf, because mm. it's the chance for me to play a complex game that requires me to outthink the surroundings while also battling the best I've ever done oh, wow. while also enjoying an outside environment and also being able to smoke and drink and be in a wheeled vehicle. And, you know, it's like 
I, I cultivate those experiences. Mm. And my my life is completely full of magnificent women. And wherever, Tell me more about the women now. Yeah, wherever there's a place where a man is, I have found that if you can get him out the way and put a woman in there, mm. it makes things better. And so I don't really have a problem with happiness at all because that's how I um, go every day. It, things can happen that disrupt the happiness, of course. I'm yeah. only partially human. So, so how do you think women should live in <laughs> partially. How do you think women should live in society? Should they be controlled over their body? Or should they let the government tell them what to do with their body? I'm just curious. I'm just putting it out there, you know what I'm saying? I just want to know how you think about political shit. I, I allow myself to have political opinions, but I don't really have any allowances in my life to um, make any suggestions or critiques on women, um, period. Um, and unfortunately... I thought everybody agreed that women were already supposed to have all of their rights and didn't have to consult with anybody about anything that pertained solely to them because they're mm. the only life bearers on the planet. Preach. So to out, how, how did they get outranked in anybody's civilization is beyond me. But I'm just saying that. The law says differently right now, so I don't... I'm just saying, I don't even know why I asked you that fucking question. I think you saw it on a screen somewhere. <laughs> Someone <laughs> decided to work with the enemy yeah, and that, trip me up. I'm sure that. What the fuck was on my phone? Oh my God. What's your next stand up special? You want to shout that out for 2023? Some biggie planning? Yeah, that's not in the future at all. So you that's just. That's literally. Um, the end of this month, December. Cat, we know that nigga is from a here. new year. You know, he seems to be a fascinating individual. <laughs> I don't think he's old enough for me to know. You see how he speaks? So I'm fucked up by his, his what? fucking what am, I, what am I saying? Right. <laughs> Should I ask him some questions and find out his story? <laughs> so uh, who are you, nigga? Where do you know Mike Tyson from? Um, wow, from radio. When I first interviewed him, we locked in. So so organic, and we just became friends. Then he came back a few times, and we just been friends ever you didn't since. Interview me when I was locked up, you said. No, no, that when you were locked up, ran when you did radio. Your first interview was the cartoon he was talking about, and after that, we just been homies. Mm-hmm. And what about you and Cat Williams? You, um, I mean, my my relationship with you is uh, Hot 97, back in the days, hanging out. Hot 97. Yeah, we used to, mm-hmm. you, used, you know, you came on my show once with uh, mm-hmm. a couple of your click and stuff. You know, I used to interview you, you know, you come through, show support, fuck with your shit, you funny, you funny nigga. Funny how? Motherfucking funny. Thank you. <laughs> that was a Joe Pesci nod. I was getting a little urban, man. Yeah, I that, apologize. <laughs> that, was a, that was a Joe Pesci what? nod. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, chill, yeah. chill. I got a fucking gift for you. This is a, a gift from Tyson 2.0. We got some weed in here. Thank you so much. Well, <laughs> hot boxing. What? Shit. Hot Thank boxing. you so much. Hot store. Hot boxing. Hot boxing. Hot boxing. Hot boxing. Hot Thank you so much. Hot boxing. Hot boxing. Hot boxing. Hot boxing. Hot boxing. That store. I, I like having them sit down and talk for a while. Sometimes we just hear, they stay here and talk shit. I'm saying I got to go, okay? None that are topping you, sir. This is a great experience. Hey, Kat. <laughs> These are hundreds of millions of people here. There's tens of millions of people here. Just tell them how to get in contact with you, what, the, what you want them to see, what you do. doing. Just tell them, tell them anything, man. Yeah, they love you. They want to see you, brother. Thank you. Tell me you're performing at. Thank you. If you're looking for me, you can catch me at Hotboxing dot (laughs) store. Um, you can catch me there, uh, primarily. Also, um, (laughs) I'm on Instagram, cleverly hidden under the name Cat Williams. That's right, K A double T Williams. And um, got a great tour. We'll be there in Los Angeles 
for New Year's in Los Angeles and Ontario. Yes, sir. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it's it's good to be here. And the weather here is the same as on the East Coast. So how crazy is that? Same temperature here as New York City. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get fucking hot. <laughs> you know, me and my wife was having a private moment. You know, it's a moment. We were, we were both crying about something. You know, it's an intimate moment with your wife. And then they can know, uh, um... A neighbor calls, hey, hey, is everything okay? Are we going to get that boat for St. Bart's? Hey, is it, what about James? I said, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I forgot I got that part of my life, too. Shit. Me and my wife hugging and kissing. We were talking about us crying. You believe this shit? Nigga <laughs> <laughs> talking about a boat in St. Bart's and Saint Bart thing, what plane we going to get. I said, what the fuck? <laughs> I just forgot I lived that life too. I'm crying about my fucking past with my wife. Okay, I'm sorry. Please tell these niggas some more shit, please. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, this is the end of another episode of oh, Hot Boxing. Huh? <sighs> hey, guys, this is the end of another great episode of Hot Boxing. I'm Mike Tyson. Um, who? And we'd like to thank Cat Williams for, you know what I mean, blessing us with your presence. Thank, thank you, you, sir. I appreciate thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And much respect for you, brother. Likewise.